Hello and welcome back to Art by the Lake. Today we have another project in mind for you. We have a 16 by 20 canvas. We have, if you can see them off here to the side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. That includes black and white, so it's really only five colors. We're going to do a, sort of a large measuring cup, single, dirty, pour down the center. We will cover the canvas in white first. Uh, I have some black that we're going to use for the corners. I have mixed these up in three ounce cups, each color that you can see here is in a three ounce cup. This is two parts Floetrol, so about an ounce and a half of Floetrol. I do weigh it. Uh, three quarters of an ounce of paint and three quarters of an ounce of distilled water. I mix the paint and the Floetrol together first. I then add the water. Each cup has about seven or eight um, drops of silicone in them and I have also uh, amped some of them up to about 10 ounces of, or I'm sorry, 10 drops of silicone. I have a big pour of white. We're going to get that going so that we don't run tight on time. I don't want you watching forever. So I have a big, big, big jug of white. I'm going to pour it and spread it and you'll see I'm going to pour a little bit more down the center uh, right before I get going. So prepare to make a mess. I like to put white on the canvas, as, as you may know, because uh, it helps the paint flow. So I like to get it down in the edges. I'm intending for my corners to be black, so I'm not too, too concerned about the corners, but I do want to get it over the edges and get the edges to be pretty consistently white. I measured out enough paint that I think will cover a 16 by 20 canvas. Like I said, it ends up being about three ounces of each color. We'll see. Um, it's sort of trial by error to figure out how much paint you need to coat the whole canvas. I don't like to waste paint. I take that back. I actually, I have fun wasting paint, but I don't like buying paint. So uh, I try to be as efficient as possible with the paint. So you can see now I'm really just trying to cover the edges with white and cover the canvas a little bit with white. I have push pins in the back of this canvas and if you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know also that I put a little bit of uh, cardboard in the back of each can stretch canvas. It's because these canvases just, they, they flex quite a bit. They're not like hardboard that we use for some paintings where there's no flex at all. These flex quite a bit. And if you, if you get too much flex, the paint will pool in the middle. And since with this one, we're pouring about 15 ounces of paint down the center of the canvas, we do not want it to pool. So there's canvas, uh, cardboard stuck in the back of the canvas. And uh, I put a little bit of push pins to keep this off the ground. And I put some push pins to also keep the cardboard in place. So if you see, Right there we have like a string in the canvas, a little piece of string. You can just pop that off. At this point, no harm, no foul. You're not wrecking anything. Uh, let me show you what we're doing. I'm going to pour white out here first, but it's after I build my dirty pour. This is a big glass Pyrex jar. I'm going to pour very gently from dark to light. I'm going to set the black aside because I want to save the black till later. Um, and I'm going to pour as gently as possible because I want these colors not to mix as much as possible in the dirty pour. So you'll see I'm going down the sides of these, uh, sides of the Pyrex pouring container. And we're really going for broke today. I'm not really setting anything aside. So hopefully the autofocus is picking this up correctly and we're making a mess. So I have created all my own colors today. They are handy art acrylics. They are from Walmart. Um, I blended to make all of the colors today because we have a deep purple, uh, a lighter violet magenta, a full magenta, an orange and a yellow. So the deep purple is in, the violet 
is going in. And again, you see I'm trying to keep it sort of centered here and pour slow so that we keep our colors separate. I fully anticipate that this paint will come out heavily purple. I'm not really worried about that. But what I'm hoping is that the magentas, the oranges, and the yellows pop through at the end in the form of cells. Okay, there's a lot of paint going in here. We're on to magenta. You can see the variation in color. If the autofocus is catching it, I'm not really sure. The variation in color here is subtle, but that's what I want. I don't want radical contrast in the colors. I want them to be relatively close. So you'll also notice I'm pouring in a location in the big Pyrex measuring cup that is right underneath the pour spout. So it allow me to, uh, when I do the dirty pour, it'll allow me to go right to the pour spout. I won't have to slosh it around in the pouring. Oop, there, there's our first spill of the day. The orange is not happy. There we go. Now the orange is a little happier. Uh, I'm using three ounce cups, these little paper cups, and they are absolutely at their capacity for this mix. So I think if I do this one again, uh, I will use bigger cups so that they're not overflowing. You can see that uh, the orange just absolutely was overflowing. So we're down to our yellow. Again, you can see I'm getting good separation in the mixing cup. So away we go. So there's our blend. You can kind of see it in there. I'm going to fire some white right out in the middle so that the colors have a little bit of a pool to move around in. And I'm not worried at all about that little bit of orange. There's going to be so much paint on this canvas that it won't matter. So ready, set. I am going to pour slowly and I am going to at the very last minute, rotate the pouring cup around. So you see I'm getting some yellow, some orange, some magenta, some cool purples in there. Uh, I'm getting a really interesting pattern. I'm trying to pour this slowly and see what we get. So I'm liking it so far. It's interesting. As anticipated, the purple is pretty dominant. I keep some little scraps of cardboard and stick around here. As you can see, as much as a table can be level, this one is definitely heading to your right and my left. So I'm going to let some of these patterns go out into here. And then we'll sit this down for now. Getting some good cell activity over here. Still pretty quiet in this purplish area out here, but I'm still liking it, so no complaints. I'm not sure why our time lapse camera just flashed. It's not dark in the room, so maybe our time lapse camera is freaking out a bit. I'm going to give it some torch. This is the Burns-O-Matic torch. You can find a link to buy a, this torch or a similar one on Amazon below in my YouTube settings. Just see if we can wake up some cells here, especially in this dark purple area. Okay, I'm going to let this sit for just a minute 
and I want to take a look very quickly at my time-lapse camera because it should not be flashing and it's flashing so I, I will be right back Okay, I swear people like my videos better when things go wrong anyway, so there's your things go wrong. Uh, we're getting some decent cells. I like to let it sit at this point and give it a little bit of flame before I uh, stretch it or tilt it. We're not getting a whole lot of activity out here in the middle, which I was kind of hoping for more. I am going to do a few tilts and stretches here to see if I can wake that all up. Again, hoping for a little bit more yellow but you takes what you get. So let's give it a little bit of a tilt. Start to get some of this activity going here. Anytime you hear it get quiet here in the room, that's just me sort of assessing where we are and trying to figure out what I want to try next to improve things. I'm going to give it a little bit more torch. Um, the corners I think I'm going to leave white. I'm kind of leaning toward that right now. I have some black that I'd like to put out there, but I'm not really deciding on that just yet, so let's just keep moving the flame here and see what we get. We're getting good cell activity here, especially in this area, in this area down here as well. Kind of hoping out here in the middle we'll get some more yellow popping up and I may dribble a little bit more yellow into that area, but I went full commitment here, so the amount of yellow we have is really kind of minimal, but let's see. Maybe we can get some yellow to wake up in here. Again, you don't have to do any of this. You could leave it just as is. I'm going to put some more yellow in here. and give it a bit of a blow with my stainless steel straw. So you can see, uh, based on what we're having happen here, the purple is sort of the lightest color of the bunch, and the uh, the oranges and the black, or the orange and the uh, yellow are the heaviest color. So you can see in this area, they're mostly sinking, and the purple's laying right on top. So we'll see. The torch always wakes some of this stuff up. I see some cells out here trying to form, so we're going, to, we're going to encourage that. I 
But overall, I definitely like it. I'm going to put some more orange in here, I think. If I have some more orange. going to do some drag technique here in a couple spots and I think we'll put some black in also and do a little drag technique. So I mixed up all this beautiful black. I don't want to waste it. I have decided that I'm going to come in on the corners with black. So we'll see if we can get that right up to the color. And then we'll do a little bit of a drag and then I think we're going to call it done. We are time lapsing this one, so you will be able to uh, watch this whole thing happen in just a few minutes. We're learning as we're going with the time lapse, so we will probably zoom, continue to zoom in a little bit tighter and continue to run them for only about two hours. It would seem as though when you hit that two hour mark that the paint really stops moving and the time lapse gets really, really boring. So stay tuned for that. We'll put it at the end of this video, but we'll also, uh, we'll also very likely uh, make it into a video of its own on YouTube. So you see I'm just pulling some of the color through here, pulling some of the oranges and yellows out to give it more of that flaming kind of look that I like. don't have to do this, we could leave it as is, but I kind of like bringing this back into the black. Be sure to, to uh, as you're doing this, be sure to wipe off your stick so that you don't take any black paint back into the orange, which if you've been watching closely, I just did. Again, we make it up as we go here. One of the things I love about fluid painting and flow acrylics is that there really aren't any rules. You do whatever you want. There's a semi-controlled chaos that I really appreciate and really like. If you don't like that, you can certainly plan it out better and do it a little bit differently than I do. Hopefully you're watching us to learn. Please, uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube. We are trying to uh, regain all the people that we had when we did the other video site and get everybody back over here on YouTube. Um, support us if you can. Use our links below if you're going to buy any of the products we're using. We get a little bit of credit for that on Amazon. I think if you've ever been part of the Amazon Associates program, when I say a little bit of credit, you'll know what I mean. It's like pennies. <laughs> You can also, if you like these paintings and you're interested in it, you can contact me at artbythelake at gmail.com if you're interested in purchasing any of these paintings. We also list them. Okay, we're back. 
I just uh, reset the video. The camera we're using uh, gives me about 20 minutes. I don't like to go a whole lot longer than 20 minutes. I think it gets kind of dull after that. You'll also notice I don't mix my paints on camera. It's not because I'm hiding anything from anyone. Uh, it's simply because it takes forever. Uh, it takes a long time, even when it's we're only doing four or five cups here. Uh, it takes me a solid half hour to carefully mix and thoroughly mix each paint. So we do that before we, we start videotaping. Uh, you'll see here I'm just doing some drag techniques just to pull some of these colors up into the mix. I fully anticipate that if you watch this back on the time lapse that you will see quite a bit of movement in the paint anyway. So what you see is not always what you get. And anytime you watch and you say, oh my god, he ruined it. He shouldn't have done that. Um, that's where you have to take risks. And I'll, I tell people all the time, the fun part of fluid art and flow acrylics is the unpredictability. Uh, if you want a very predictable result, you can do that but you're better off with some of the normal brush painting techniques if you want a very predictable result. If you like chaos and unpredictability like I do, then this is the way to go. So I'm just sort of messing around with a little bit, pulling some colors down, pulling some colors in. Every so often I'll see a low spot or a bare spot that I'll cover. Um, I'm going to try to just get a little bit more bright yellow in this area. And then I think I probably will give it a little bit of torch and then we'll call it done. I say this all the time, but if you are interested in these paintings, it takes me about a week to get them dry. And then depending upon whether I resin coat them or how I finish them, varnish or no finish at all, uh, it can take another few days to dry. And then because of my schedule, it's hard to uh, find the time, but it takes me a few days to list them on eBay and Etsy. While I enjoy Etsy, uh, the fees on Etsy are a little bit different than eBay. And the audience on Etsy is much different than eBay as well. So I try to put them on both platforms. If you favor one or the other, let me know. But Let's see, I see just a few spots here that I'm going to hit with the torch and then we can call this one done. And I'll start thinking about a name. Uh, thank everyone, I want to thank everyone for their comments. The comments have been a lot of fun so far. The email correspondence has been a lot of fun. So please keep that up. If you have an idea for a name for this painting, we love to hear that as well. So please. Let me know if you have a naming idea for this one. Um, it looks very sort of interplanetary to me, sort of uh, planets colliding and black hole kind of things. So let me know what you think. Anyway, we are Art by the Lake. Thank you for joining us. Please stay tuned for the time lapse video of this painting that will come immediately after this part. If you want to contact me, you can contact me at artbythelake at gmail.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel that you're watching right now. We are Art by the Lake there as well. Um, and please uh, find us on Etsy and please find us on eBay. 